Tyson Fury says he's going to plaster Deontay Wilder on October 9th at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Let's analyze that. Push the weight in the flex, flex the lavish one in the six. Hey, with the runner boy, you niggas no question. Yo, you would run a motherfucker high stepping. Hey, hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey, motherfucker never learned your lesson. Yeah, I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boo. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boo. I mean, they woke up, drink blood, things out. Full moon, motherfucker, change like a hoe, brother. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. Drew Titan Bross on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. You know, let me take my time with this. I love it when the Furies talk because they give you everything that you need to know. You just got to listen. You got to put your emotions aside and just listen. What am I talking about? First, ladies and gentlemen, let us read. Boxing News 24, the link will be in the description. Tyson Fury, I'm going to plaster Deontay Wilder on October 9th. Emphasis on the word plaster. He didn't say destroy. He didn't say dismantle. Plaster. WBC heavyweight champion Tyson Fury says he's going to go after Deontay Wilder immediately on October 9th to get him out of there in quick time. Whatever worry that Fury had about Wilder's punching power he lost it after beating him a year ago, February 2020. Fury realized from that fight that Wilder is all bark and no bite if you come with the, with the right game plan. Wilder and his new coach Malik Scott have been working hard in the last month to change things around so that Fury can't do the same things that he did last time. It won't be easy because Fury has gotten the better of Wilder in both of their fights. Language is important. It won't be easy because Fury has gotten the better of Wilder in both their fights. And it might be and it might be asking too much for for Scott to change things. So already, who wrote this? William Lloyd. Already he has a biased opinion going in. He thinks he lost he thinks Deontay lost the first fight. Although it was the draw. And we all know what happened in the second fight. Okay, so he's one of those. Wilder can't get much worse than last time, so that any change, so that any change will be for the better. It will be interesting to see what game plan Fury's trainer Sugar Hill will have for him. Fury predicts early knockout of Wilder. What's going to happen is I'm going to run across the ring and knock the f out of Deontay Wilder. I'm going to plaster him. There it is, plaster him said Fury to Frank Warren's Queensbury promotions when asked what's going to happen on October 9th. Emphasis on that term plaster. Okay. I'm going to be like a plasterer. There it is again. Look at that. I'm going to be like a plasterer on that on the night. Plastering walls. Look at that. Fury continued. I'm going to be, I'm going to splatter him in the ring. He's getting knocked out for sure, 100%. It was an easy fight the second time. And it would be even easier. It'll be an even easier time the third time. I'm knocking him out in, uh, inside quick time, said Fury. Deontay will be fighting differently this time and not standing there and waiting for Fury to, to back him up. If Fury wins, he'll need to cut off the ring and try to maul Wilder against the ropes. What I've seen from, uh, okay, he's talking about Usyk. Usyk hasn't been showing everything, says Fury. What I've seen from Usyk in the last two, all right, he's talking about Usyk right now. Uh, Derek, so they, they, it sounds like right here, I'm not going to read this whole thing. They're putting the character for the horse. He's talking about Usyk. He's already planning ahead, uh, uh, ahead of Wilder. All right. Um, 
he says a lot of fighters have looked terrible in fights to get other big fights and then rose to the occasion and got those big fights. I got a sneaky feeling Usyk is better than he looks. So he's saying that Usyk doesn't look that good. Whatever. On the night of when, when uh, he feels he needs to perform, then he will. A bit like myself, I can fight a bum in half-ish uh, fight, but I can but I can then fight the best of the world on the occasion and have good fights in Fury. Okay. All right. This is chatting-ish, as they call it. Now, let's discuss this term that he's using. Use it three times. Plastering. Plaster. You know what's unique about those people that like to hijack planes and blow stuff up? I don't want to say the word, but y'all know who I'm talking about. You know what's unique about those people that do that? They kind of like to tell you what they're going to do before they do it. And after it's done, the people that are left to assess the situation, they say, wait a minute, this happened and we got a letter here. And they've been telling us they were going to do this the whole time and they did it. And after it's done, there's always some group taking responsibility for it. That's the Furies. What do you mean, Drew? What do you mean? That term plaster, I don't like it. Especially coming from the Furies. Let me take you back for a moment. After the first fight, I mean, since we're making stuff up, right? Since we're telling half truths, everyone wants to say, oh, well, Fury won the first fight and got robbed. Yeah, well, guess what? Fury got knocked out by his own admittance. He was knocked on his behind, and all we heard was the, the, the number four. Shout out to Jack Reese, right? All right, so after that fight, I recall reading about his family saying, I don't ever want to see Tyson fight that guy again. Because that was destructive and it scared him. It went from that to Fury's father willing to bet David Hay, what, a couple of million, a million dollars that Tyson was going to not only beat Deontay, but stop him. Where did that newfound confidence come from exactly? Well, we found out, didn't we? I talk about it habitually, and I'm not the only person doing that. I'm pointing out the discrepancies in Deontay's performance, and y'all want to act like y'all don't see it? We've seen it. We also went back and saw what he did in the first fight. And nobody, y'all can ignore it if you want, but y'all know what we saw was not normal. We were the only people pulling for this third fight, and y'all was running away from it. Why? Why are you running away from this fight when you're in the red with Bob Aaron? You owe him money. We know that. He said it. Why are you running away from this fight and trying to fight AJ? It's the biggest fight between two UK fighters in UK history. and You can't even have it on your soil. Why? Because you have no license. Why don't you have a license? It's suspended. Why? Because you pop dirty. You and your cousin. Bore me, right? So this is the guy that we're dealing with. And I can go on and on, but I'm not. But this is along the lines of him saying, you know, um, I'm, I'm trying to have a safe camp and uh, I don't want to, you know, not make the date over some stupid cut or catch COVID even. Salute the champ side. And then what happens? He catches COVID. But He's in a car dealership. He's on an airplane going to see his uh, sick baby girl. COVID was running through your camp, but we wasn't clear who had it. You're getting the best spawn partners, which doesn't include F.A. Jabba and Jared Anderson, because we know what happened. We know what happened. But what I find interesting now is that um, people are starting to abandon ship on their uh, on their uh, predictions for this fight. But more on that tomorrow morning. 
But this term plaster. Are you telling us what you plan on doing before you actually do it? Antonio Margarito versus Shane Mosley. Brother Nas goes into the uh, locker room of Antonio Margarito. He's already warming up. He says, man, you better take those gloves off and I'm giving you the short version. The y'all can research it. I need to see those hand wraps. He took the hand wraps off and tried to hustle it out the room. He said, uh-uh. One of the hand wraps dropped. He picks it up and says, what's going on with this hand wrap? Shows it to the person that's representing the commission. He says, you don't see anything wrong with this? The person from the commission says, I don't see nothing wrong. It looks fine to me. He said, well, we're going to see. And y'all know what happened, right? He kept the hand wrap, went through the appropriate channels. And what did we find out about, about Antonio Margarito? He tried to cheat Shane Mosley. He tried to kill Shane Mosley. And what did that do? They said, wait a minute, wait a minute. He, the fight went on. It didn't matter if he had class in those gloves anyway because he didn't touch Shane that night. And Shane knocks him out because Shane was the underdog that night. Shane knocks him out. Then insult to injury, and I want y'all to pay attention. Pay attention. Insult to injury. What happened? He wasn't allowed to use those wraps. He fought a fair fight. Margarito lost. That got knocked out and stopped. We didn't see that coming, right? Shane Mosley was supposed to die that night. I remember. He knocks Margarito out. And it didn't end there. I want y'all to pay attention. It didn't end there. They said to the commission, look what this guy tried to do. What happened to Antonio Margarito? Banned from the sport. He had to fight, yeah, but not in America. Go to Mexico, man. Oh, yeah. Now, Bob Arum later had to pull some strings to get him back fighting in uh, America. He ended up fighting uh, Manny Pacquiao and bust his eye up. But my point is, once they found that out, did you not rethink everything? Did you not say, wait a minute, wait a minute. He got caught. You know something? When he knocked out Golden Johnson, that was a little difficult to watch. And I'm like, what is this guy hitting with? Then I thought about the two fights he had with Kermit Central. I said, wait, 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 wait. I've never seen Kermit get hurt like that. But then you say, wait a minute, Miguel Cotto. Hold on. Miguel Cotto, I never seen his face get busted up like that. I never seen him hurt like that. Could it be? But it was so far ahead that you can't go back. But if you talk to those fighters, we spoke to Miguel. I mean, we spoke to uh, Kermit Centron. He was in the strong house. Those two losses to Antonio Margarito derailed his entire career. Did y'all know he was in talks with Miguel Cotto to fight him at the Garden on a Puerto Rican Day Parade, which is a Sunday out here in New York? Can you imagine two Puerto Rican fighters? Miguel Cotto versus Kermit Centron at the Garden? That would have been beautiful on a Saturday night. I, I, you, you can't miss that. That would have been electric. And prior to the Antonio Margarito situation, Kermit Centron was a top tier guy, man. He did gave Miguel some problems. He was a he was a killer. Antonio Margarito offset everything because he's a cheater. You couldn't prove it, but you had to put two and two together. Because what happened when he finally fought Miguel Cotto again? So what happened? But I want to focus on the insult to injury. Margarito was put through the ring, and his career has a dark shroud over it. Are y'all paying attention to detail? Or are y'all just, just listening like, hey, I don't care, hey, you just crying? No. What do I always tell you? This universe don't lie, it's 360 degrees. You get what you put out. You eat like a pig, you're gonna end up looking like a pig. You take care of yourself, you're gonna end up looking well. Your look is a byproduct of what you intake and how you, how you exercise. That's all that is. So if you do a lot of dirt, what you think is gonna come back at you? It might not come back when we want it to, but it's going to come back eventually. 
the whole time during this whole fiasco, because that's what this has been. This has been a fiasco. This whole time, Deontay Wilder has been quiet with headphones on. And when he has spoken, he's spoken to the appropriate people that haven't stabbed him in the back, that haven't set him up, that haven't put, tried to play games with words. Don't I always tell you that time reveals all truth? And if you read around to certain people, they were on Twitter talking about Fury don't look right. I haven't been wrong since. More on that tomorrow. He don't look right. He don't look. We're starting to hear it already. Oh, well, you know, is his daughter okay? Why are you asking about his daughter? He's on the beach barefoot doing interviews. He looks fine to me. When we told y'all this guy was looking to avoid this fight this entire time, y'all were enabling that, hoping that he would get in the ring with AJ. We kept telling y'all arbitration. It was the only time ESPN mentioned arbitration when he lost. And then what did they do? Instead of saying he should have kept his word we would be going through this, he should have just mopped the floor with Deontay Wilder back in October or December so we could be talking about uh, 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 Undisputed right now. Instead of doing that, they blame Deontay Wilder for getting in the way of Undisputed. That's right. Is that the right thing to do? Is that and this is American media? This is what you. This is how you treat your American champion, your former American champion. He has to fight to get what's in writing, and then you blame him for getting in the way of Undisputed. Are you guys crazy? But Deontay Wilder's the villain. What did he do so wrong? Did he pop dirty at all? Is, does he, is his license suspended in uh, the United States for drugs? Did he go on coke binges and balloon up to 400 pounds? Or did he start boxing because his daughter had a, um, had a handicap that he needed to take care of? And plastering, huh? I firmly believe that this guy's telling us what he's trying to do before he does it. I'm just reading what he said. This guy's trying to commit an act because he can't win in a fair one. You know, it was the last fair fight he had? Against, it was against Otto Wallen. That was the last fair fight he had. And thanks to that fight, we now know who Otto Wallen is. You look at Tyson Fury in the Otto Violin fight. Did that look like the guy, the type of guy that would beat Deontay Wilder like he did? It's two different guys. Did Deontay Wilder look like the same guy from the first fight or any fight pre pre previously? Robert Garcia doesn't think so. Evander Holyfield didn't think so. We don't think so. But you accept it because you hate the man. Plastering. Uh, catch COVID even. And then you call COVID. What are the odds? Right? Some stupid cut and sparring. Or catch COVID even. You call COVID. Okay. John Fury dropped the title. Let's assess it. Drop the title. Go fight AJ. But who am I? He said Tyson got 20,000 yes men around him. That's what he said. But then he's walking on the beach doing an interview. He said it had nothing to do with the title. You heard Fury say that in his own mouth. Fight him or pay $80 million. It has nothing to do with the belt. So he could have dropped the belt. He still has to fight Deontay Wilder. It didn't matter. He ain't got 80 million. Then they lied about 20 million step aside money. These guys are BS artists on the highest level. They have pulled every rabbit out of the hat and it's failed. The whole time they talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Keep talking. Yeah, that's right. Keep talking. I want you guys to keep talking. I love it. Keep talking. Keep talking. 
because you've been talking all this time. Don't stop. Because anytime you talk, you tell on yourself. And I firmly believe he did it again. Plastering, like Margaret Cheeto. You think they ain't ready for that? Hmm? Lace those gloves up properly. Get those hand wraps on properly. Fight a fair one and do the best you can. Because I firmly believe the best you can is going to help you. Plaster it. Really, dude? Really? Caught you. I caught you before you even got started. Remember who I talked to. Cat's already out the bag. Next trick.